Hey, everybody. Uh, like I always say, I have a special guest with me. I know I say that every single time, and I always do this preface every single time. But um, I have my friend with me today, Brian um, McCleary. I, I never even use your last name, so that's what's <laughs> fine. Uh, you're just Brian. Uh, so Brian McCleary is here today. Brian is a, a worship leader. I think, honestly, I think I met your wife before I met you. Um, yeah. Your wife was one of my, when, when I was a worship leader in Kansas City, she was one of our media techs. So yeah. the media techs, you know, they'd have a, back then, basically they had full media tech teams for every single team. And she would come to all of my briefings, or at least the ones that she was scheduled. And so I would see her like every day. And so yeah, I like back in day. 2006 or something. Yeah, like, it, was, yeah. it, was, it yeah. was a long time ago. So yeah. Um, yeah, so that was my way. And then I, you know, met Brian and he started playing worship. I don't know if it was first, if you were first on, were you, you were first on uh, Corey's team. Was it Corey's team yeah. or Brian's team? Uh, I think it was, it was definitely Corey's team back in, I think, 2007. Corey and Matt. Yeah. Oh, it's such yeah. a good team. Such yeah, it was fun, man. It was so fun. I just remember we would always, because we were always in different sections, we'd always like pass like right. ships. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but I've known Brian a really long time. We've stayed in touch, you know, over the years. And uh, yeah, so thanks for being here, man. Yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah, so getting started, just kind of tell us, uh, tell us about your stuff. You know, how did you get started with worship? Where are you from? Just yeah, like yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I'm originally from uh, Tallahassee, Florida area. I lived like in, you know, in the, in the sticks, 30 minutes outside Tallahassee. Uh, anyway, I started worship leading when I, um, I mean, I don't know if I would say I really started worship leading necessarily. I, I remember just being at a Bible study and falling in love with Jesus. Mm. And, um, and just really the, the worship, side of things came out of just an overflow um and it really wasn't like oh man i could you know do this as a career one day i didn't, never thought about that you know it was really just like um we uh our hearts were just alive and on fire for jesus i remember going to the brownsville revival in uh 1998 and man just the I think the reason why the Lord convinced me that he's real is because I actually felt tangible presence of almighty God Yes, all around me. It was like electricity and um, more than just, more than just a one time feeling. It was actually something that like stayed with me and has mm -hmm. carried me through many years. Um, but, you know, um, from that time uh, I, you know, we were, we met um, with a guy named, I met with a guy named Ben Varan. And we, um, we had this college, uh, and you actually might know Liz. Do you know Liz? Yes. Naomi's sister, yes. Rizzo. Justin Rizzo's uh, brother-in-law, uh -huh. right? I think, mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, yes, yeah. Um, so anyway, we, so we um, used to meet for a Bible study, and we just, and we would just sing to Jesus. And, and I think a lot, of the, a lot of the songs that I was writing in those days just came out of, you know, uh, sitting in my room. I was homeschooled, so I had plenty of time, you know, hey, amen, I had plenty of time to just, um, just to pour my heart out to the Lord, and, yeah. and, and those songs of intimacy um, came out of that, uh, that season, and I wrote a song called Shine On Us, mm. um, and then, uh, you know, the Lord, um, I got married in 2005 to Ashley, beautiful yeah. wife, amazing woman of God. Okay, stop um, right there, stop right there. Uh, yeah. I want you to brag on her a little bit. And I want, you know, one of the things that I didn't know, we were talking before we started the recording that yeah. I was like, man, people don't, I never knew this, but like Ashley's an incredible singer. She's an yeah. incredible songwriter, an amazing worship leader that she yeah. has a record out that I absolutely love. I listen, stream it all the time on Spotify. Brag on your wife for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Brag so she, oh my gosh. So she has been writing songs for um, many years. And I mean, there's times when I would just sit, and listen to her play piano, lean against the wall and just ball like a baby. I mean, she has a way of, she has a way of like singing the Lord's perspective and truth into situation that mm. just, um, she's just really special, really special. So I, um, I uh, recently we had an opportunity to, to, uh, to raise some funds and get her first album done. And I'm so excited. It's actually available now everywhere, you, you know, uh, everywhere you get. Yeah. Plug it right but, now. And we'll plug it at um, the end too. 
Okay, okay, so it's called Grief. Yeah. Um, her name is Ashley McCleary. And, um, and man, I mean, the guys up at JTL. Uh, yeah, Jared. Jared Logan Zane, yeah. and, yeah, Zane. Yeah. Um, they produced it, and it's just, man, it tugs on your heartstrings. It just yeah. reminds you, it reminds you that God hasn't forgotten you. It reminds you that there's no question that's off limits. It reminds you that, um, that he's not afraid of our, of our fears and our doubts and our worries and the things that scare us. Um, he's actually present in our time of trouble and struggle and need. And, uh, it just kind of, you know, man, it, it, it's really her, um, it's her song of coming out of a season of grief, uh, from losing her mother. Mm. And, um, and really, um, uh, it's just been, gosh, she's able to give language to people who have gone through trauma and mm-hmm. suffering. And, um, and that, that's really what it's meant to, to be as a ministry to, to yeah. uh, people who have gone through, you know, uh, PTSD or still yeah. have it, or, you know, just to be a resource and uh, a conduit for the Holy Spirit to flood into those situations and moments. And, um, and the stories, I mean, even today, she was reading me a, a, a message that she got from from a girl who um, who was really I, I don't want to give any details but yeah. she's going through something really tra- really traumatic and yeah and um and she said it's just been such a lifeline for her yeah. on repeat you know so yes um, so anyway, well, I can I'm, say I'm yeah excited I mean, for, for me just testimonial I mean I probably should write a review or something because I've listened to it enough times but mm-hmm. it's been I had a really tough year this last year and yeah. man it's been really you know now that you say that I'm like oh man you're right like PTSD like oh man you're like okay, I get it now why this has been such yeah. a soothing CD yeah. to like a soothing album to me is because, yeah. oh, that's kind of what it was for. So yeah. it's awesome. So you guys got married in yeah. 2005. Yep. Yep. So got married in 2005. Um, and then um, actually before we got married, let me, I guess I'll have to yeah. reverse it. That's fine. <laughs> um, we were engaged and I was doing an internship close to where you are actually in oh, wow. uh, Cape Girardeau. Yeah. Uh, just just a little me. south of you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, near, near St. Louis. Um, and with, with her uncle actually, who was a big inspiration to me growing up. He's an amazing worship leader. Um, his name is Ron Inkenbrandt. And, um, and so I've heard of him. we were, oh, you, do you know him? I think I, I don't know if I do okay. know him, but I think he's definitely come up to St. Louis. So yeah, he's, I think he just hosted a, um, one of the tent locations for, for yeah. David's tent. No, not David's tent. What is no, it? For it was tent America. Tent, um, was he, That's he was right. Probably, yeah, he was probably in uh, in uh, Fonterre. Yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, he um so I was doing an internship there, and we were engaged at the time, two thousand four, I believe it was. If I get my years wrong, Ashley, you're just gonna have to forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> She'd be like, Brian. Uh, Actually. Anyway, but <laughs> so um so two thousand four, I am driving back to Florida, um, and we stop uh, in Atlanta, and we're at a one thing conference. I remember. Uh, Isa uh, was leading worship at one thing and, in yeah um, in Atlanta. I yeah, remember that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Lou Engel never knew who he was. He was just a guy that I was listening to speak and just with fire and authority. And the Lord spoke to me and said, "Move to Kansas City." Come on. And I'm like, okay. I didn't know what was in Kansas City. I thought it was like a worship room. Um, I I didn't know anything about the prayer side of it. Yeah. And you know, I I just kind of like uh, I. I was like, okay, God, I'll be obedient to what you're saying. And, and then, so we get married in 2005. I save up some money. We move up to Kansas City. Um, and as I'm driving, this will this story will probably come full circle. I'll try to convince it. But this this part of the story will come full circle at the end related to where I'm at now in San Antonio. Yeah. But I'm in, I'm in the, um, the U-Haul or whatever truck it was. And I'm asking the Lord, um, hey, how long are we going to be in Kansas City? I just, for somehow I had this, or for some reason I had this, like, uh, this awareness. I don't know, I was maybe 22, Mm -hmm. something like that. Um, And I just had this, um, this, uh, I I don't know what I would call it, just um, an awareness that life happens in seasons, Mm. (laughs) which looking back on it, I'm like, that was a real gift from the Lord. I don't know how I even, anyway. Um, and so, uh, which later on I would learn from Mike, you know, that we should, we're so quick to judge ourselves in three month increments, but it's like, Hey, give yourself some time, give yourself some space. Yeah. 
<laughs> five years, yeah, ten years. Exactly. <laughs> Those exactly. are the terms he always says. Yeah, you can evaluate yep. in five and, years, and you get to evaluate in ten years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and what I've, gosh, I mean, yeah, that is so. Yeah, so anyway, I'm I'm asking the Lord, how long are we going to be in Kansas City? And He says, He says five to seven years. And yeah, I'm like okay, and so I filed that away, and I kind of forgot about it. And so we moved to Kansas City, and I'll touch back on that later. But yeah, we moved to Kansas City, and um, and I'm uh. I'm, I think I was working a job somewhere in the marketplace at the time. And, uh, the song I had written, uh, shine on us, um, got accepted to be put on like a compilation album that, um, yeah. foreigner, foreigner music was doing. Yep. So anyway, we're in the studio. I meet this guy named Corey Asbury. I don't know who he is. I'm kind of like a more of a morning section guy. So I go to the prayer room at 6am, probably for one of your sets. Yeah. Uh, I was there and, in the morning. and I was, yeah. And I, um, I would go right before work. And, uh, and so we're in the studio and I'm like, Hey, would you, would you be able to hit this note? It's really high or something. And, and he was like, actually, why don't you do that? And so I went in there and, and recorded it. He's like, Hey, you want to join my team? And I'm like, sure, I guess. I don't know who you are, but whatever. <laughs> so, and so it was back in the day, like when, yes. you know, we were just kind of going for it. And, uh, and then, so I, I jump, I, I'd switch my prayer room hours to the evening. And, and at that time I was part-time staff. Yeah. Um, and so we, uh, we started, yeah, just, I mean, uh, two hours every evening for a couple years there. And then, yeah. uh, and then we, and then, um, we got pregnant. Um, my wife and I got pregnant with our daughter, Lily. And mm -hmm. in 2008, uh, um, she was born. And, um, and so we, I, I jumped off staff for about a, uh, jumped off of staff for about a year and a half. I think. Yeah. Um, and through that season, that was actually the time that Ashley lost her mom. Like, I mean, yeah. a few a few months after Lily was born and, and, uh, and, and it was, it was tough. Um, it was just that grieving process was real. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, and it was, uh, man, I, I was kind of young and dumb and I didn't know how to shepherd her, her heart through it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was, I was trying to, um, I was trying to figure, figure out how to lead her. And it was just, oh, it was rough. Um, but the Lord sustained my heart through it. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, it was like, I really can only attribute it, it's, you know, what I've learned from that is this, um, even in the days when I felt like I was, I was in the marketplace and yeah. I was uh, a manager at a retail store and I knew I was supposed to be giving my gifting to the Lord. And there's some identity stuff there, you know, and there was like, ah, I wouldn't really want to be doing this stuff for you, God. And, yeah. like, and I wasn't being fulfilled in that. And so I had to actually yield over that part of my heart to the Lord, that part of my identity and say, you know what my highest calling right now is to be a shepherd of my family, to be a steward of my home. That is my highest calling. My assignment yes. at the time, my assignment was to actually be in the marketplace yeah. before that it was to be in ministry but now my assignment was to be in the marketplace my calling yeah. was to be you know a, a, a shepherd of my household and so i i just poured myself into that um and um and really what what i've learned from that is like even though there were days when i was i felt like a drone i mean mm. there was times when i just um i had to i was like working, 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 you know, the sales numbers, the other stuff, uh, all the, all the things that were driving me in those years, um, or in the, in that short, maybe two years, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I was being successful. I was getting promoted, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I, but it, I, in my heart, I felt like, gosh, I was just like, the only thing keeping my heart beating was, was, was the fire of God. Mm. You know, um, it was like, I could just tell there was a hunger that wouldn't go away is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. And, um, and there's one thing I've learned is like, if you're hungry for more of the Lord, you're actually alive on the inside. There, a, a dead man doesn't have hunger, Yeah. <laughs> you know? So even, even though I don't, I didn't see certain things that I wanted to see happening and, and fulfillment in, in uh, other areas, I know I knew that the hunger was an indicator that I was alive and that yes. the Lord was actually keeping my heart beating and, and my desire was for more of him. And so anyway, so that two years, uh, you know, um, was, was rough coming out of losing, um, Ashley's mom. And, um, 
after that though, um, there was this kind of series of crazy prophetic things that happened. Um, five different people within a matter of 24 hours uh, said, Hey, you should quit your job and do IHOP full time. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And so I remember going to, um, I mean, I, I won't, you know, it would take too long to, to yeah. go into that bar, part of it, but um, I mean, it was just like really significant things, really significant things. A few people were people that I didn't even know. And, um, and uh, some of them were ones that, you know, Corey ends up texting me that, that evening after I'm talking to Ashley, I'm like, babe, what did we do with this? Like all day today, there's been four people telling me I should quit my job and in, in unrelated situations, you know, and, um, and Corey texted me and said, Hey, would you consider joining my team again? And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. So this is 2010. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm like, uh, okay, God, um, you, you know, if you provide, I'll do this, but it, you know, it's one of those things where you have a family, you know, and you know what I mean? And, yeah, no, and, I get it. 100%. And yeah. And, and so the Lord was like, I'll carry you through it. And he really did, man. I mean, the next, the next few years, um, sometimes the, sometimes the finances and all that stuff came in the 11th hour and it was like a huge stretch of my faith, Come but, on. um, but, uh, it was, it was something that like, just, just wove in the trust factor with me and the Lord over and over again. It was like at every corner, at every turn, I was confronted with my doubt yeah. and my fear. But he was like, hey, I've still got you. It's okay. Everything's going to be all right. And come so on. he still would come through at every corner. And so he would provide. And, um, and so anyway, I jumped on the team with Corey there. I think I was co-leading with Matt Gilman for a while. Yeah. Uh, Misty's team for a while. Uh, were doing you like double Ryan? team. Were, were you with Ryan at all? I feel yeah, like. I was, I was his associate for about, okay. I guess, a year, year and a half. I was like, like man, that. I could have swore you were with Ryan. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love that guy. And actually, he's, he's a big part of um, the, uh, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing now with my worship leaders that awesome. I have here in San Antonio. I mean, we were all, he was always pouring, in, pouring into the next generation. Mm -hmm. And I so firmly believe that. I want to work myself out of a job. Yes. Um, because if I'm not raising up the next generation of worshipers, who's going to, if I'm yes. not, um, pouring into them, you know, so I just well, want to be faithful to, to give what I'm given. What's funny is, you know, I was read, I read somebody's quote and, you know, I was telling the pastors that are, that are at my church right now, you know, I read a quote that said, every pastor is an interim pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like every That's single right. pastor is interim. Meaning it's just for yeah. a period of time. And honestly, it's yeah. like your job is to raise up yeah. the next generation every single yeah. time and always be yeah. looking and going, who are the, who's the people you've highlighted, Lord, tell me who they are yeah. and let me do that. Yeah. yeah Ryan, if you yeah, haven't, if, watched, yeah, I was going to say, if you haven't heard the episode yet, go back and listen to um, oh, Ryan's yeah. episode. It's really good. He talks, yeah. I get him to really uh, share a ton about worship pastoring. So I haven't put up any of the yeah. quite, you know, as of this recording, a lot of his videos haven't mm -hmm. gone up yet, but he has yeah. some really good, um, he has some really good information. And, yeah. I love that guy's heart. So yeah, you were with, you were with Ryan, you were with them, you're back on staff yeah. and leading. Yep. Work. yep. And what, um, what comes next? Yep. So, so after that, um, I was, yeah, leading worship with Ryan and this church from San Antonio reached out to me. Um, and at the time, I was on like a, a short list of, of worship leaders that Forerunner was, you know, going to record a full length album with. And, and um, uh, you know, I was kind of in, in, in the zone, you know, doing what I was doing at IHOP. And I wasn't planning on leaving. I wasn't, yep. I never put out a job application. I never thought I would be a worship pastor. I actually never really wanted to. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, um uh, this church from San Antonio uh, reached out to me on Facebook. I think they found like a video someone posted on YouTube or something. And uh, they were like, Hey, would you consider being our worship pastor? And I'm like, as soon as I saw the message for some reason, um, it, this one just clicked with me. I was like, wow, huh. that, that might, that might be the Lord, <laughs> you know? And so I, I uh, bring it back to my wife and I tell her, Hey, this church in San Antonio, Texas reached out to me. Uh, what do you want? What do you think? She's like, she automatically knew she was like, we're moving to Texas. And I'm like, wow. what? And if you know my wife, yeah. um, she's not necessarily that like, um, how do I put it? 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, she doesn't really want to like, oh gosh, how do I put it? Uh, really like not, not, not as much of a risk taker as I yeah. am and not as much of a, uh, doesn't yeah. enjoy the change of scenery as, yep. as quickly as I do, um, <laughs> you know, to put it diplomatically. Um, so, um, so to see her, to hear her say that was like a pretty big deal. Um, so in, wow. anyway, we end up flying down to the, to San Antonio and we meet the people and, um, and I felt like, oh my gosh, this, this church family is awesome. I was so reluctant as well to just in the beginning stages of it because you're linking arms with a brand new spiritual yeah, family. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's, it's not, uh, not something to be taken lightly. I'm moving my family halfway across the country and all that stuff. And so I, um, so, but the, the pastor, he was, uh, my, my pastor now, Kirk, he, um, and, and by the way, I'm at, it's a church called Crossbridge Community Church yes. in San Antonio, Texas. And so um, he was not a, one of those fast talking, you know, wham, bam, we're going to get a car for you, man. We're going to put you up in a house, dude. You know, it was, it was really like, Hey, tell me about yourself and, yeah. and, and tell me, you know, just slow moving conversationally. And I knew I just could tell, I was like, okay, this guy's legit. There's, mm -hmm. there's something different about this guy. Um, and, and the thing I love about him, even now skipping forward a bunch of steps, uh, yeah. even now he, he hasn't taken off the mask. There's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no different guy. He's actually so, um, just such a great leader, such a humble man, easy to work yes. with. Um, I feel like, um, we're, we're advancing the kingdom together, you know, yeah. and it's not, it's not his kingdom that I'm trying to build. It's actually the, the come Lord. on. Um, so I, I'm super, super grateful for, for what I'm, what I'm doing anyway. And so, um, we were flying on the way back from Kansas city mm. after I met everyone. And I was like, uh, I was like, Lord, I, I feel like this is you, but I really need confirmation, you know? And so he showed me this picture, um, in my mind's eye of, um, over the years, I, I told my wife as missionaries, you know, you know, man, the finances are like oh, yeah. this, like, <laughs> dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah. up and down everywhere. Yes. And so I told did my it, wife, uh, did it, done it for a long time. I get yeah, it. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, I told my wife, um, there's light at the end of the tunnel, you know, over the years. And I, I was thinking, you know, um, you know, passive income coming in from maybe uh, recording stuff recording, and, yep. and that yep. could help. And it wasn't, it wasn't to make a name for myself. It was mm -hmm. simply to keep my house plant, or keep my family planted in the, in the house of the Lord. And, yep. uh, and so, so all that to say, um, I had this picture from the Lord of me, um, walking through, um, this tunnel and I was, I was, I had these lasers coming out of my eyes. I was so focused on the light at the end of the tunnel that I was in the picture. I was actually dragging my wife and daughter behind me. Oh, it wow. threw, like in the mud, it threw the mud. Wow. Um, and my, I just broke, man. I just broke. I was tears a mess. And the Lord said, you can continue on this path and I'll bless it, but there's a better way for you. And I'm like, yes, I'll, I'll take the better way. And so it was really obvious to me in that moment that we were supposed to move to, can uh, sorry, to, uh, San Antonio. San Antonio. Anyway, so fast forward, we're in the, we're in the, um, the U-Haul this time. And I realize as I'm driving down and I never put in an application, I never, I never pursued this church. I never, you know, this was all just like the Lord divinely moving us within a span of about a month. Yeah. Um, it was, it was very bittersweet, heartbreaking to leave all those connections and history that I made for seven years um, in Kansas city. Yeah. I look at, I look at the day and I'm like, this is seven years to the month that we moved wow. up to Kansas city. Come on. And, and I was like, I wasn't even trying to Come go. On. I wasn't trying to force the hand of the Lord. I was just being obedient. A lot of people and a lot of young people, and I know I did the same thing when I was young. They worry so much about being in the quote unquote will of God <laughs> yeah. that, that they forget actually the love language of the Lord is obedience. And if we're actually going to be obedient daily and actually go this, you know, give our decisions to the Lord and say, God, help me there is a good chance that we'll always be in the will of the Lord if we're actually obedient daily. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you know, um, I don't know where that lands theologically per se. I'm not, you know, one of those guys, but I mean, I feel like um, I've just seen it in my own life play out yeah. that way. And, um, and the, the lifestyle of faith that the Lord called me into is, yeah. is probably the bedrock of that, yes. you know, just the trust of it. So 
Um, anyway, so I've been here for, uh, as a worship pastor of my church for six years this past August. Um, awesome. Pretty crazy how time flies. Yeah. Um, and uh, recorded a few albums since then. My church family has been incredibly, incre- I can't even overstate this enough, incredibly supportive. Um, just, um, you know, the bitter, part of the bittersweet thing that I was talking about leaving Kansas City coming here was it, like uh, with Forerunner, um, I was, you know, they were they were telling me I was going to record an album. I was like, sweet, all right, I've got songs. This is going to be great. And then when you leave staff at IHOP, you're kind of like saying, okay, that's that's not going to happen. Yeah. And so I really just had to trust the Lord. You know, what? How do I, um, how do I release these songs that you've given me and into the earth, um, and uh, and really fill your people with with worship as far as yeah like, what i what i think about when i'm releasing music is actually like i want to be able to give language and truth and i want people to sing it you know i want them to be able to latch on to the melody and actually sing the truth of the word and that, that it would come off of their lips that they wouldn't yes. just enjoy it coming off of mine you know but that it actually would provoke their heart and in worship they would be able to um, connect with the Lord and, and the Holy Spirit minister to people, all kinds of cool things happen. But um, so anyway, I was like, how's this going to work out? And, and, um, and through, a, uh, through uh, local contributions and online things, we were able to record um, uh, back in 2015, an album that we released in 2017. It took a while, yeah. um, which was uh, a whole nother story. Um, yeah. But uh, but <laughs> if you know what I mean, yes, uh, I do. Sometimes <laughs> al- albums can take longer than you anticipate. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, um, and that album uh, opened up some other doors, and and now I'm with Watershed Music yep. Capital capital um christian music group yep um with adam and um with adam carpenter yeah. yeah um and really um we just recorded a live album at my church my team okay actually i'm talking a lot about myself now but i guess you're no. that's why you called, why I called. <laughs> so okay okay good um so there's <laughs> let me go let me go back a little bit i guess yeah um, i'm getting too ahead of myself but no that's the fine. reason the reason why we pressed record in the first place with this last album, uh, I was at Heaven Come with mm-hmm. my team. Um, I brought my team of maybe ten. If somebody maybe 10 doesn't know, people. if someone doesn't know what Heaven Come is, oh, okay, yeah, Heaven Come okay. is an annual conference. Good, yeah, yes, Heaven Come is an annual conference that Bethel Music puts on. So um, good, <laughs> they get so good, man. <laughs> um, so it was in Dallas and that year, I think it was 2018. Yeah. Was it last summer? I thought last year they did it at Dallas. It may, but yeah. it may have been the year before. Yeah. Anyway, it was probably 2017. I can't remember. So anyway, we, um, we, man, time is flying, bro. This is nuts. <laughs> it's almost 2020, um, dude. It's almost 2020. Oh, bro, don't tell me. So, okay. So anyway, um. So we're, we are in Dallas and I'm, uh, uh, I think we were like, we're in the nosebleeds, man. I mean, this sound was like, okay. It was like one of those mornings. I'm one of those guys that like, I've been to so many conferences. Um, You've been to, you've led. Oh yeah. You've seen, yeah. At a certain point, you're just like, uh, (laughs) it's like like one more event. Yeah. Can I just skip the morning session, you know? And, and anyway, um, so I'm there at the, uh, at the conference and, um, and uh, okay. Um, we're at the hotel and I tell my team, Hey, why don't you guys go ahead? I'm going to Uber there after I sleep in or something. And so the Holy spirit, you know, dealt with me. He's like, Hey, you need, you need to be a good leader. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, okay, all right. So I went with my team. We we took the van that we had rented or something, and we're we're uh, we're during during a, a worship song. It was out of nowhere, man. Um, the Holy Spirit came over me, and it felt like being just. It felt like uh, I was baptizing the Holy Spirit all over again. And I mean, it was wild. What happened was um, it felt like 50 pounds of weight just literally lifted off of my body. I was freed from fear that day in the most massive way. I never realized how much fear I actually had until I was free from it. Mm. So 
over the years, I think I became okay with the fact that like, you know, bit by bit, ounce by ounce, we're okay with a certain level of anxiety or a certain level of, you know, this is normal. You know, you, you, you have a kid and you're, you're raising a family and different pressures mount up and, and um, you start thinking, this is just normal, you know, and after a while, you're not realizing it, but you're really weighed down. And that was me. I actually, I was in an, in an instant, I mm. was freed from fear of man, fear of failure. Um, that was a massive one, fear of failure, which actually kept me paralyzed and did, you know, I yep. was in the whole comparison world. Um, so fear of man, fear of failure, fear of success, uh, fear of all kinds of stuff, I guess. And, and really um, in, in an instant freed from it. And, and so what happened was, um, as well as being freed from it, I knew that it's kind of like um, Jesus has taken the prison doors and opened them, right? Yeah. I mean, we are all, we, if you receive Jesus as, as your savior and you trust, you, you trust in, in Jesus, you're actually free. The prison doors are open, but how many of us actually still live in the prison cell? Yeah. Right? And so for you me, have to I walk knew out. that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you have to and, walk and, out. And a lot, yeah. A lot of us are still keeping ourselves captive when we're actually free. Yep. It's all about our perspective. And so what, what happened was when I became freed from fear, I knew that I needed to take a step of, uh, in the opposite action, which is faith. And, yeah. and I knew that if I didn't put some, you know, uh, kind of risk it all or take a step, take different steps of faith that, that the, the propensity to allow a fear to mm -hmm. come back in would still be there. And so, um, so I said, I, I looked at my team and I was like, what if we just press record? I've been sitting on these songs for a while. And if you'd have told me, you know, three, four years ago that I'd be recording in a live album with my, my church team, I probably would have laughed, you know, I'd been like, no way, dude, this, you no know, way, you know, um, cause you know, I mean, yeah. you played with some incredible musicians and <laughs> back in the day, you know, um, just, you know, I, I don't know that I had the faith. I don't know. Yeah. I think I was so wrapped up in the comparison, so wrapped up in the fear. I don't know that I had the faith for it. Yep. And, and, and the, the gift of faith that the Lord actually gave me was just like, gosh, man, um, I'm so grateful. So anyway, I said, what if we press record and, and, and simply give what we've been given, mm, you know, and so that the Lord, so that the Lord will give us more. Yes. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, measure up to anyone else's standard, but yes. I want obedience. Come and on. So, um, yes. and that so is, that's we, amazing. That's so yeah. the truth. Yeah. G give with we, what you have. Yep. Yeah. Give what you yeah. have. <laughs> yep. And, and I feel like the Lord was, and he's been drill, you know, drilling this in me for the past, past number of years. And this refers to my pouring my, everything I can into developing um, my worship leaders and training mm. that I'm working with um, every bit of <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly, what I've learned, what I've, what I've wished I wouldn't have done, you know, coaching and developing them, discipling people, simply giving what I'm given. So the Lord will give me more. Come That's on. it. And, and, and so really we, we recorded the album uh, and um, yeah, man, I mean, it's, it, churches are singing it, the songs, and it's just really encouraging, man. I mean, so, mm -hmm. so we, re we released it, um, a few months ago. I think it was July, I believe. Yeah. Um, and, um, and it's, you know, it's really, it's really reaching people. So Spotify is featuring it on the big playlists and stuff. And yeah, no, it's so great. Really, really. Well, yeah. yeah um, tell people now and then I'll have it, say it again at the end. So, uh, oh yeah. So it's, it's called, he wears a crown. He wears a, yeah. He wears a crown. Live at, yeah, he wears a crown live at Crossbridge. Um, and if you're a worship leader, um, I want to encourage you to take that song and lead it at your church because what's happened in my church, I've actually watched the the uh, the culture of my church shift. Uh, there's just something about that song. I didn't write it by myself. It was actually with with a guy named um, Josh Lavender, mm. amazing songwriter. Mm. Um, and so. Um, and you know, there's, there's just something about lifting up our eyes to Jesus. Yes. And when you can, when you can get a crowd of people singing together in one, it just, um, I don't know, it just something shifted. Our church just loves singing that song. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of one of those corporate worship songs that are just easy to, easy to latch onto yes. and, and worship with. So, 
So um, before we go to the next part, I did want to say this. So one of our mutual friends, a guy here from St. Yeah. Louis, John, yep. John Strandell yep. is an amazing, yep. amazing guy. Amazing guy. He helped, he helped co-produce, do some production. He did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, man, he crushed it. Dude, <laughs> it's he amazing. Is, we, yeah, he's awesome. We, we, rec we recorded it really kind of unconventional. Um, uh, we, we basically spent, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 or maybe even like 90 hours of on stage production, working through parts um, yep. uh, within a span of a month. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know how my guys are just awesome. Anyway, they were like, they were, they were like, you want to do something that's crazy, but we're with you. Um, and so um, we would record um, a simple rough board mix and yep. spend the next couple of days listening to it and what, what we would want to do different. And we would go back and retrack it at another rehearsal time. Uh, that's very, then, that's very John. Meaning John really likes to, like he's doing that with Corey yeah. and he's doing yeah. that with Madison Street right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Like literally he's yeah, doing so, that right now as we record. Oh, yeah. He's doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, they are they are having a I think they're they're recording soon, right? Like, yeah, like this weekend. Right? I think it's this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I actually Corey Voss, uh speaking Great of guy. another another plug for a bro of mine. Um yeah. love that guy. He wrote he wrote um with Jenny Lee Riddle, he wrote the writer of Revelation song. Yep. Jenny Lee Riddle, by the yeah. way. Uh wrote the song called You Promised. Um and you know, there's many versions of it out now, but man, that song just, oh, first time I heard it, I was in tears. And, um, and you know, anyway, but M Madison Street Worship, love those, love yeah, those guys. Yeah, they're great. Um, yeah, so. So yeah, John. This, yeah, John's awesome. I love him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a great guy. So. Genius. We, we kind of talked about some corporate worship songs, and this is a topic I kind of did want to talk about. We'll, we'll, we'll hit on some other things in a little bit, but I do want to talk about this because I think this is a huge um question especially in in regards to um in regards to like I, and i'll i'll say it I, i'll just say it because i want people to know where i'm coming from mm -hmm. um so i am i'm gonna ask you i'm gonna bring bring up the point and then i'm gonna actually we're gonna discuss it okay so um so just recently there were a few records or a few albums that were just released by christian artists um one of them well i guess one of them is, is a christian artist now um yeah. <laughs> but, but i was like i think i know where you're going with yeah this. <laughs> well no because I, I i have i have a question because i, I really think it's important um yeah. at least because I, I we got opinions and i want people to actually talk about this yeah. um so the first one is um i'm gonna butcher her last name um but the bethel artist what is her what is her how do you say her last name Callie. Callie. Uh, is it Callie? You're talking about Callie? Yes. What okay, I don't name? really know how to pronounce it, so I don't want to butcher So, okay, so we're not going to say it. We're I just going to say her first spoke name. With, yeah. So she is an incredible, I mean, she did Ever Be. She, mm -hmm. she, yeah. she has a couple songs that are right. just absolute, like, for, like, corporate worship songs. I'll, right. I'll say it just like that. For yeah. corporate worship songs, right. she has some incredible corporate worship songs. Well, she just released a double disc. Right. Like, well, it's not even a disc, but a double album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the songs that was released, and I could be controversial when I say this, one of the songs she released was a song called Oasis. Mm -hmm. Now, I heard a lot of people comment and say, no, I just, I want to talk about it because I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. For, for people, because I heard somebody say, oh my gosh, Callie released the, one of the best corporate worship songs i've ever heard and like she's really breaking the mold of worship you know this that and the other yeah yeah and then on the other side um we have kanye west releases right. this gospel album which i know that sometimes gospel albums doesn't mean it's a worship album i get that yeah, um, yeah. But somebody asked the question online i didn't answer but somebody asked the question online is jesus is lord a worship album so I'm saying all this because I want to ask you a question. I want to have a discussion about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I put, I put out there, not, I, I'm going to be really like, I'll maybe set, let's set up some game rule, like some game, some, some rules. Uh, some, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think any music that's made, quote unquote, could be a worship CD at mm. any point. It can be a okay. worship. Now, what are you worshiping? 
So are you worshiping yourself? Yeah. Are you worshiping yeah. the world? Come are on. you worshiping sex? Are you worshiping Come on. drugs? Are you worshiping alcohol? Yeah. Are you worshiping rock and roll? Are you worshiping? Okay, yeah. I get that. And I yeah. get like anything can be worshiped in the sense of I'm giving homage or I'm praising something. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. So is it a worship to me? Eh, probably both of them are. If you're thinking about it in those terms. Sure. But I think the important sure. word, and, I, and I, I even put a little survey out there and said, I want people to tell me, what do you think a corporate, what makes a corporate worship song? Now that's important. I use yeah. the word corporate because that's yeah. different than me just making a, a, a worship song, quote unquote. Yeah. So what are yeah. your what are your thoughts on that? I let you kind of sit on this for maybe a you know yeah or a bit. So give me your thoughts yeah. on what you think make a corporate worship song. One because I think you're not. I'll say you're an expert, but you're a great worship leader. You're a great worship you, writer. I mean, I've done shine, you know, on us number. Oh, that's of awesome. Times. <laughs> I actually, you know, just just a, just a, this is really funny. So during when when that when that came out, was that on a Merced? Yes, it was. Yeah, back so in two thousand seven, so I think. A, yeah, yeah. That, so that was on a Merced, and I, I think that that sounds right. So it was on a Merced, yeah. and during the one thing promo that year, it was the pro, for the promo for that. Derek Box and I did that song for the. Promo. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So we did your Dude, song. I, he and I did the awesome. song for the promo. So everybody was listening to us sing your song. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Dude, so, okay, funny thing about that song and speaking of corporate worship, I, when I wrote that song, I think I was 17 years old. And literally, I was sitting on the stage. No one was in the room. Mm-hmm. I was sitting on the stage um, of my youth group building. Mm-hmm. And... I was just sitting there just singing and, and sometimes there are songs that just kind of happen. And that one is one that I just wrote in a, in a matter of like 30 minutes. Come on. It, it was, I don't, I don't necessarily, I'm not trying to over spiritualize anything, no. but I felt like it really was like a divine download from the Lord. Um, and, and you'll get um, them. Yeah. You will get yeah. those. And honestly, like, yeah. I mean, this is kind of a, I, I mean, it's true, and, and I really do believe this, that the more you exercise those muscles, right. strange as it sounds, if you exercise that muscle, creativity slash the, the revelation of the Lord slash whatever, yep. it become even easier. Like, yeah. I know some yeah. you have to work through, but some of them will just, if yeah. you start flexing your writing, you know, Katie yeah. Reed, you know Katie Bennett, Katie Reed, yeah, yeah. talked about yeah. it. She was like, hey, listen, give yourself plenty of time to write terrible music. That way, yeah. the more that you write, the more you work, the easier it is to receive. The easier it is to right. kind of come on. Get. But come so, on. so that was yeah. a song that came really easy. Yeah, it was, it was and, and that's not the case for everything. Um, mm-hmm. I've I've worked on songs that have taken five years, and yep. you know they're just you need to stick it back in the back in the oven until it's done. You know, um, and sometimes I would take you know half a song from. Uh, from something that wasn't quite finished and put it together with another half of a song and, and make something that was like, Oh my gosh, why did I not see that this whole time? Yep. You know? Um, but, uh, which doesn't really, I, I guess to say that a divine download thing, um, I had someone ask me just the other day about songwriting and I'm, and I'm going to get back to your question about corporate yeah, worship. Um, but I'm getting distracted. Sorry. I just had, had someone ask, uh, you know, give me a few tips on, on songwriting. And, and I was like, Oh my gosh, you're talking about an art form that is, different for everybody yep. and it my my techniques and my things that work for me might not work for you i might i might give you a technique that will just frustrate you you know um the and it's just like you said earlier you just have to keep you just have to keep trying you just have to keep doing it you just don't yep. give up um the more you exercise the muscle just like you said the stronger it'll become and i think one thing to touch on um about songwriting is what is in your heart does come out Yes. Um, if you, if you are, well, I'll, I'll, we'll go there later. <laughs> anyway, let me get back to the, uh, cor- corporate worship songs. And so yeah. I, I think, um, you know, what is a corporate quote unquote corporate worship song? Um, I would define that as, um, is just something that is singable for a, a body of pe- a group of people that, um, is one that doesn't necessarily need to be performed by a specific artist. Uh, you can, anybody could grab their guitar and learn it and lead it, you know? Yep. Um, and so they become vessels of if, you know, um, hopefully they become in vessels of encounter for, for mm-hmm. groups of people. 
yes. to encounter the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Hopefully that's the goal. Um, and so at least it is with mine. Um, yeah. So um, what I think makes a good corporate worship song is instead of using, uh, and I stole this from Jay, I just saw Jay Thomas a few days ago in Waco, Texas. Um, he man. was talking about, yeah, he was talking about how do you engage a group of people? And, uh, and he's and and I think that question got posed and, uh, and he was, he's like, he gets on the keyboard and he starts singing Jesus. Uh, uh, what is it? Jesus, I love you or something. And then he changed the words to Jesus. We love you. And, and I noticed when he did that, I was like, Oh, you, you're so right. Sometimes we need, we just need to be able to have the right language to, to mm -hmm. know, to, to be able to, to really, um, put something into perspective when when we use the word we mm -hmm. it, it it has a um or us or things like that it has a way of drawing everybody in that just um it becomes our song and not yeah. just a uh we're watching a guy have his time with the lord on stage while he's right. worshiping you know so um and i think like uh so that's 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 not the case for every corp every great corporate worship song there's there's ones out there that are like Oh, Lord, yeah. I give you my heart. Lord, I give yeah. you my heart. I give you my soul. And, you know, yep. something that's like really easy to sing and it's very personal and very intimate, which actually is my, um, uh, that's my propensity is to, is to write songs of intimacy. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, uh, but basically there, there's something about when you craft a memorable melody. Yes. Um, it, I think it just, you, you want it to be able to, um, I, I, I look at it like this. If, the first time someone hears something, they're learning it. Yes. They're listening. They're just listening to it. This, by the second time, hopefully, if it's, if it's catchy enough, they're able to kind of sing along with it. Yeah. By the third time, they're actually engaging their heart in worship. And if mm. you can pull those three, thing, those three things off in a, in a song, then you probably have a, a good corporate worship song yeah. where someone can, someone can learn it and be able to um, be able to sing along with it and then, yes. and then, uh, worship with it. So, um, it, and it has to be easy to sing, um, because the, I mean, I think the goal is, is to get people seeing truth and in scripture. Um, yeah. when we do that, I mean, all kinds of things begin to happen, uh, yeah. transformation. I mean, um, healing the land. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at my notes and just thinking about like, there's just, um, I think that, the thing, the cool thing that happens when we get in a group of people and we're singing together and uh, exalting Jesus is is that faith can begin to fill our hearts. And, yes. And and um and I think faith is a gift. I think yes. that we can always ask for more faith. Um, I know that that's man, I, that's been key for me. So, um, I uh, I also think that something that doesn't get talked about often enough, um, is the rhythmic cadence of the melody and the lyrics. Good. Um, if, if you can, there's something about, well, I love writing hooks. I love, I'm a chorus guy through and through. Mm -hmm. I love, um, I love memorable singable choruses. Um, and, um, it's kind of like, if you can write the rhythmic cadence of the words to me matter a lot. Yes. Um, you find, you find that a lot in pop music. Um, you find that a lot in, in music that's very, you know, mainstream radio friendly. People can sing along with yep. it. A lot of top 40 songs that are singable songs have this rhythmic cadence to the, to the lyrics and melody that um, kind of stand alone apart from just the music itself. Yeah. You know? So, um, so there is a, uh, there, if you can nail that, that's, that's, that's something to think about when you're writing a, a corporate worship song. And I just think like, um, yeah, I think those, it, I was kind of trying to think about like, how do I boil it down yeah. uh, to where it's really simple? And I think I was just thinking those three things, um, back to what I was saying earlier, if you can, you can learn it, sing it and worship with it. Yes. Within three steps. I think that's a pretty, that's a, that's, you're close to it right there. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think that's key. And it's funny because I, I have had, I think I've had more conversations with people in regards to. Um, I mean, I've had a lot of frustrated songwriters because they'll, you know, I, I look at it like this. I don't know if I've said it on the podcast before, but I'll say it now is, um, you know, I, I really do look at, th there are like two extremes with writing, right? There's mm -hmm. two extremes. At least I see it this way is that there's two extremes and they're crude, but they work for me. Um, there is like form and function. 
form yeah. and function, right? Form and function. And I think most mm -hmm. things will fit kind of into these categories. Most yeah. people with form, you know, over here, most people with form, um, they're very much artists. I look at them as the artist. And the yeah. artist <clears throat> basically says, I have this art, this download. I have this art inside of me. I need yeah. to get it out. And honestly, yeah. I'm going to release it. I could care less. I would like you to listen to it. I'd like you to buy it. Yeah. I'd like you to yeah. absorb it. I'd like you to appreciate it. And yeah. I have this piece of art that I need to release, right? Okay, that's the form, that's the form part. Mm -hmm. Then you have function over here. Now function is I have a job to do. <laughs> My job yeah. in function is I, you've said it already. If you can have a song that people will sing. I need a song that people will sing. I think um, one of the things I remember, and I, I'm just going to out myself. I remember really, and this is a really strong word, but really not liking Chris Tomlin. I'll just say mm -hmm. it like that. I remember really like being like, I liked him back in passion days and yeah, yeah. He started writing music and I'm just kind of like, Oh man, you know, like, Oh, it's this, it's this Tomlin song. Right. Oh, it's this other Chris Tomlin. No, no, and I, I'm yeah. just going to out myself yeah. and say it. Yeah, but, yeah. But then I remember listening to him do an interview and he expressed why he did things the way he did them. And I said, right. okay, so I listened to him and this is what he said. So remember, this is the function side, the mm -hmm. form and function. He said, I want to write songs, one, that people will sing, two, that other churches can play. Yeah. yeah. Meaning when he said corporate, he's like, I want songs, one, that if I'm leading it, I know right away, everyone in the room is going to engage. Meaning yeah. like you said before, yeah. the song is a vehicle that they're going right. to engage with the Lord with, a right. tool to engage with the Lord. And the second thing is, I want people, like you said before, I want people to take this song home and not feel like they have to have an Ableton rig to play. Right. right. Yeah, that's or, that's a good point. Yep. Meaning like hope, a Chris, the yeah. great thing about a Chris Tomlin song is I can lead it on an acoustic and it's about as effective or a piano. Yeah. And it's a basically yeah. about as effective if I have it either way. Yeah. You know, that's I a good get, point. The, yeah. the song itself is effective at its base level. The melody right. and the harmony are the harmonics and the melody work to where anybody can do it. Right. right. One level. I mean, you're not going to maybe sing it in the yeah. key A every time. Right, right, but, right. But meaning like. Or, or can, Chris Tomlin's key. That's what I'm saying. Chris <laughs> yeah. Tomlin sings mostly in the key of A. He's just he's yeah. up there and I'm like, bro, yeah. you're singing yeah. A. Um, you know, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, he can do it though. And so yeah. my thought was that I'm like, man, because I, I, I tell people all the time, like, what are you, are you just trying to write music? Are you trying to write music that people are going to sing and or want to play at their church? And now if you can get the crossover, praise yeah. the Lord, you yeah. know, like praise yeah. the Lord. If you can get the form and the function to join, like if you can get right. that Venn diagram, yeah, the yeah. form and the function and yeah. you know, I'm going to backtrack. So that leads me back to the beginning, which is we have Kaylee and we have um, Kanye. With yeah. And it leads me back to like I remember um, she just released a song called like I said it before Oasis and everybody's mm -hmm. like wow she did this worship song like and I know they meant corporate worship song but worship yeah. song and she blew it up and it's an amazing song but I remember mm -hmm. listening yeah. to it I listened to it probably three or four times all the way through whole time whole thing just all the way through yeah and I looked at my wife and I said this is a great pop song right I, <laughs> I, I thought it's, too. <laughs> I don't know if it's a <laughs> no, and I'm not dogging yeah. it at all. Like I'm not yeah. throwing shade. I'm totally. I'm not dissing it at all. It's an amazing yeah. song. But I go, this is a great pop song. I don't yeah. know if I know anybody that would ever lead this song. Like right, that. right, yeah. It, and the funny thing is, um, her producer that produced that album in Reading, his name is Jeff Schneeweiss. He produced my album called Worth the Wait. Mm. Um, and then also I think he produced Stephanie Gretzinger's uh, first. First oh, yeah. album, which has been oh my gosh, a staple. Um, but uh, piano. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, and you know, I, I definitely I've I've heard the song that you're talking about, Oasis. Um, and for me, I was like, it was you know, knowing Jeff and his his production style, I, I definitely appreciate it on a different level, just because I've worked with him yeah. personally, and 
and I can, I can kind of, I know his process and I'm like thinking about how he's doing all that, but um, you know. Uh, well then I'm glad I yeah, specifically I, I have you. Agree. I'm glad I specifically have you because you have insight <laughs> that maybe an other, like I could have somebody else. They wouldn't understand it the same way that you Yeah, would. yeah. Because you know the I producer and am. some people don't realize yeah. this, but the producer is kind of responsible for shaping the, yeah, the, the sound, way that yeah, they sell. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Cause you, it's like you said, I mean, you can take a, uh, and I, and I guess if, you know, there's a good chance that if she were to re-record that song in a different, an acoustic uh, version, it, exactly. A different down. form, a different, yeah. Uh, there's pro it's good possibility that, that people could latch onto it and kind of see it in their context. Yes. And I think that's, that's part of um, corporate worship is like, you're presenting something that maybe could work in their context. And I, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, uh, what is it? Multi-tracks and yep, loop different community. things like, yeah, loop community, different things like that have helped um, have, yeah, there you go, dude. All right. Um, <laughs> but those different, those different things have, they have made um, my life so much better. Oh yeah. In the prayer yeah. room. Yeah. Cause I use them to do prayer tracks. Yeah. I make yeah. my own prayer loops and. Oh, that's awesome. Dude. So they've, they've Heck made yeah. my life great. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we use it, we use um, multi-tracks or whatever, the yeah. community stuff. Um, we use those probably maybe one, one of our songs every yep. worship set, you know. Um, it just kind of helps to yeah. be that little, the little sprinkles, you know, different, different things to help elevate the track. I don't have a that. second keys at, at my church. Yeah. We don't have a second yeah, keys. Yeah. I don't have yeah, a second do electric. I. I don't have yeah. a percussionist. So honestly, yeah. I just use them to fill in. Right, that kind of right. Stuff. So, same here. So, so yeah, so we kind of think the same thing in, in terms of that. So mm -hmm. then we have Kanye's record. So Jesus, yeah. Jesus is King, right? I got it right. Which I've, I've listened to from top to bottom and I'm a fan actually. Oh, I I've, really am. I've listened to oh it. Oh my gosh. I've listened to it uh, probably for real about five or six times all the way through. Yeah. And then I've listened to some of the songs just on their own. Now, yeah. another person, he said, is, he asked two different questions. The first question is, is Kanye a worship leader? That's the first question. I would say yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. the second thing he asked is, is Jesus is, Jesus is king? Is that a technically a worship? Now, we're, let's say corporate because I know what they – Sure. When people yeah. say worship albums, I know what they right. mean. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Know I'm getting, I know I'm getting semantics, but, but words, yeah. are, words mean something. So he right. means a corporate worship song or a corporate worship yeah. record. Is that worse? Is that record a corporate worship record? Um, I I don't think so. Just because, well, it just depends on what your. I guess it does depend on your definition of corporate worship. I well, I mean, there are some definitely could you say, singable could moments. Could you say yes and no? Oh yeah, I I think it's kind <laughs> of like there are parts. It's kind of like, yes. Yeah, definitely parts of it that could be pulled out and sung in a group. Obviously, there's a choir singing on some of the tracks. There's you know there's there's definitely moments in there where. Well, I mean, you know, I will say this: um, not that it really matters, but my five year old will walk around the house and she just goes, "Hallelujah, Hallelujah." hallelujah yeah, dude. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. <laughs> it's so hallelujah, good. It's so hallelujah. good. She just walks yeah. around the house, yeah, singing, singing those parts. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely. Um, I I actually, man, I'm I'm blown away. I've watched some interviews with the guy, oh and I'm gosh. I'm and I'm doing what he's saying to do. I'm actually praying for him. I mean, he yes. asked the body of Christ in one of his songs, "Pray for me." Pray for and, me. And, and and we're sitting here, I, I'm watching all this dialogue online, and, and I'm not even going to speak to that because I don't even want to. Doesn't matter. It. But yeah. um, but. But what I do want to say about that is, man, I am, I am praying for him and Me too. I am so excited to see the actual real transformation of a man who's following Jesus and yep. not a religion and yep. not a, not a, uh, what is it? Uh, not a denomination. He's yep. actually just going for the man, Jesus. Yep. And, and I'm like, praise God. Yep. This is exciting. And yeah. I think what I'm noticing is I, you know, if I could be so bold as to say, what if these yep. are the way, these are the beginnings of the waves crashing for revival? Like what I if? 100% you know? believe it. Come I'm on. not even I what have if. Faith. I have faith I, for that. I totally believe yeah. it. I honestly yeah, I like, I, for that. and I've had a, I've had a couple conversations um, specifically with um, Jay's brother, Jonathan, JT. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've ever yeah. heard about JT before. I, I, I think I have. Yeah. 
Yeah, so JT, JT lives here in St. Louis as well. He and I are really good friends. Yeah. And um, he and I had, had this conversation a couple of times, but I'll just kind of share, you know, I haven't shared this really anywhere. So I'll share it with you, you know, sure. talking about it. <laughs> um, so it's interesting, like my, my first thoughts, just so you can know, like going back. Um, so a mutual friend of ours, actually, do you, do you know Jordan and Joni Johnson? Do you know the Johnsons? Yes, yes, I so, do, okay. actually, yes. So they're yes. from Kansas City, and, mm -hmm. um, and Joni did work with Standard Style, which was like a clothing brand and clothing yep. store and really high end, high end. Yep. Oh man. I haven't been to standard yeah. in forever. Yet. Super high end fashion. Yeah. And so, um, they've been friends of mine, you know, we've been friends for a really long time. Yep. And, um, so Jordan and did Joni, they become Baldwin and Baldwin? Yes. Yeah. Did well, they become a, it, Baldwin? It was a secondary. A separate, I okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a okay. secondary brand. If I'm, I gotcha. could be wrong though. So don't quote me on it. Okay. I never shopped there. It's cool, but I, I can't afford it. I'm a missionary. Yeah, yeah, same um, here. <laughs> and, and so, uh, but I was always connected. So I always knew yeah. it was cool. I just could never afford it. Um, yeah. I was more of an old Navy kind of guy. And, there you uh, go. <laughs> and, so, um, and so they actually went to one of the first Sunday services. They went to one of the wow. first at the beginning of the year. Okay, yeah. And he posted some pictures on it, and I candidly, just texted him because he posted it. I was like, Jordan, I need you to tell me, bro. What is it? Like, what is he doing? Yeah. Second thing. Yeah. I said, I asked him, I said, dude, is it a cult? It seems a little yeah. culty to me. Okay. Now I'm just going to walk. <laughs> no, no. Cause I'm just going to walk you through yeah. my inner dialogue. Yeah, sure. Sure. So, sure. So thing number one, I asked those questions and it was really interesting because Jordan, the first time was like, eh, I mean, I have to look at it, but he was kind of like, Oh no, it's, it's pretty, it's legit. Like he was like, it's interesting, you know. Like he was like, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm not quite sure where it's at, but it's not a cult. And and honestly, just so you know, I'll just talk it through. The yeah. white jumpsuit thing kind of threw me off a little bit. I was getting some yeah. jump sounds, kind of David Koresh, kind of Waco, Texas, yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Branch Davidian vibe, and I was kind of like, yeah, eh, I don't know about that. But yeah. then yeah. I thought about it. They're a gospel choir. What do gospel choirs wear? Right. They wear robes. Mm -hmm. They're not wearing robes. They're not wearing the same colored robes, which is what gospel choirs do. They were wearing yeah. all the same colored jumpsuits, all yeah. the same colored whatever. And so that the, right away, my brain was like, oh, okay. Nope. He's just doing it because of whatever. I will say yeah. the second thing that kind of worried me was I knew that I think Kanye two CDs ago, albums ago, had a song release called I Am God. Like, right, right. Yeah, right. And, and yeah, if you yeah. follow Kanye, which, which I have, sorry, I'm outing myself. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I've always been a huge rap fan. And so it's yeah. like, uh, <laughs> so, so I'm like, I followed him, you know? And, and so I told, um, I told, uh, I was telling somebody, I was like, I'm kind of worried that, is he taking the worship for himself? Like, is, is he doing this? Because oh, yeah. Because he, he, his, even when he changed his name to the yay, to ye, you know what I mean? Like yeah, Jesus, yeah, yeah. Jesus and all that. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm taking it for me. Well, yeah. So that was whatever. Well, a few, as the months have gone on, I followed the Sunday service thing. I try to watch as much as I can, meaning I try to, I'm trying to see it. I want to see what the fruit is. I want to see, you know, I mean, I'm just doing the normal yeah. thing. I'm not going to yeah. stamp on it yet. Well, when he did a few weeks back or a month ago, I guess it was when he got up and shared and essentially was like, look, the Lord told me I was supposed to start a church. Like, I felt like I needed to start a church. Like, I don't even know if the Lord told him that, but he's like, I need to do this. Yeah. And he said, four yeah. months in, I remember hearing him say this. He goes, four months in, I got delivered. And it's like, I, so I started this thing and four months in, the Lord delivered. Wow. And, wow. you know, it's funny just from my own testimony, I can say this because I didn't realize it. I re really didn't realize it until he said it was even yeah. my own personal testimony, my own personal testimony. I had a period where I walked away from the church yeah. and walked away from the Lord. I, you know, yeah. short period of a few years, but I did it. Yeah. And yeah. I do remember, it's funny. I was like, he started a church before he came back. Like he came back to church before he came back to the Lord. I'm like, what a strange mm. statement, but I'll say this. I know for me, I know for a fact, I started going to, to a church. I came, I started coming back to a church and yeah. being on a worship team before I even really came back to the Lord. As strange as that sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it happened, and as soon as I heard him say that, I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord. And then he started saying more. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? And my pastor was the same thing. My pastor says, he's like, he and I have been talking yeah. a lot about this. 
And he says, listen, Nathan, you know, in 1975 or whatever it was, when I got saved, he goes, literally, like the day before I got saved, I was smoking pot. I was, you know, yeah. doing drugs. I was doing blah, blah, blah. And he says, yeah. you know what? I got saved. And guess what? The next week I had a Bible study of 25 people. And I was, yeah. because of the Jesus <laughs> well, no, and this is important. Yeah. This is important because he says it was the Jesus movement. And so yeah. many people were coming to the Lord. And I am going to tell you what my revelation is. I told Jonathan this, and I really believe this is I do a hundred percent believe this is the beginning of Jesus movement 2.0. I a hundred percent believe it because I, I think about it like this thing. Number one, that's really interesting. Jesus movement, 1970s, the got the black community really was not touched by it. It was really not affected mm. by it at all. Mm. That, which was interesting. The second thing about the, the Jesus movement of the seventies was music was the catalyst. Mm, yeah. Music yeah. was the catalyst. That yeah. was the thing that really pushed it. Thirdly, that it was organic. It wasn't, but yeah. through, it wasn't through denominations. It wasn't yep. through big things. It was grassroots. It was people showing yep. up and just doing something. Yep. So we have over since the seventies, basically had the framework set up of, we have the internet, which is, which is thing number one, that's is really big. That's huge. Internet is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Second thing, which I think is probably second most important is we have an art form that didn't really exist in 1975 to the way yeah. we understand it now. And that right. art form is rap music. Yeah. Hip hop. Rap music yeah. specifically. Rap music specifically as a medium is geared towards and suited for messaging. Yeah. You yeah. give messages. Yeah. Like every single rapper is a preacher. Yeah. In a, in a way that may, maybe in a way that maybe like a normal singing song songs yeah. are different. But I think that Kanye has basically opened a door be, and because of the accessibility and because of the availability, even of technology for yeah. the millions of young kids that are going to listen to him, hear him, yep. hear what he's doing. And are they doing it for money? Are they doing it for this? I literally don't care. I don't I 100% either. It, it's, do yeah. not care. And they're like, yeah. what about, what about? And I'm like, I am so done with what about. I yeah. literally, I'm 41. I tell people all the time, I'm 41 years old. And I know I'm not there yet, but I'm to the point where I just don't care about hardly well, anything. Also, I want Jesus I was, even to be if, glorified. Even if it's, yeah, even if it's for the money, <laughs> what, don't care. What, kind of, what kind of subset of a percentage is he trying to go after here? It's like, <laughs> come on. He's already got millions and millions of listeners. Like, what is, you he know. Doesn't it's need like it. And needs, honestly. It's, he's yeah. like he's one more million or two more million. I mean, it, yeah. It, it doesn't matter to him. Like, yeah. he, and that's what's yeah. great. Is he doesn't need to, but I think I think that he is going to be a catalyst for raising yeah. up a million messengers, hundred yeah. percent, where yeah. people are going to be preaching and saying yeah. the name of Jesus. I think yeah, he's giving people boldness. I think that yeah. he's releasing something in the spirit, if I can say it yeah. like that. He's releasing something. He's giving permission in the spirit for something, and I do think there's a level of forerunner that he's experiencing right now because he's experienced a level of persecution that I haven't oh, seen man. in a long time well, on, on both sides of the fence too. And that's, what's really, sad really is weird that we, we don't, we don't, not everyone has to work out their salvation on such a public stage. And he's I not going to be, he's not going to be able to erase his past. Like no. legally, he's not going to be able to pull down his music and whatever other, but, and, and, and I've even heard someone say something like, yeah, but, uh, don't give us don't give us an album. I want to see his actions, and I'm like, this is his action. Like this is his outlet. <laughs> this is his place of influence, and yes. he's literally putting Jesus yeah. on display. And I'm like, okay, I've I've heard some interviews where I'm like, I'm convinced. I really am. Yeah, with I mean, Zane, where he just did that God. last interview, the the hour long one he did on YouTube, is incredible. Yeah. Just listen to that. And it's crazy. Yeah. You know what's, what's really bizarre to me? I watched the, the that. Beats one. Is that what? Is that the one? I watched the one where he's in Wyoming. Oh, yes. That's the one. Yep. That's a great one. Yeah. So I, oh, I mean, BB, the, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So I watched the one where he's in Wyoming. And I'm going to tell you something. I didn't even tell anybody this, but I'm just going to say it. Is yeah. I watched that and 
I was blown away because he's wanting to create a cotton farm, a hemp farm, a self-sustainable right. farm. For his clothing um, line, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. his clothing line. But I think even the, his mission on who he's wanting to hire, the specific types of people he wants to hire is yeah. really interesting because I think yeah. I, I looked at it and I'm just like, oh, I remember when like, I remember when Keith Green moved down to Texas and started a farm. Oh, like, wow. I'm going, That's interesting. is he like, and, and I'm just, I'm having these thoughts and I'm like, is he the next Keith Green? Mm, like yeah. my brain's like going, and I'm not going to say, yeah. I don't want to put that kind of pressure on the guy. And he has literally no idea any of this information, yeah. but I'm, I'm, just, I'm <laughs> yeah. just, I'm doing the math in my head and I'm right. looking at the circumstances. I'm going, this is very similar to the seventies. Yeah. Like, this is very yeah. similar. And so I am super, super excited about, um, I'm super, super excited just about uh, uh, just the, the one I'm super excited just about the music in general that people are releasing. Yeah. I'm super yeah. excited about that Two, I'm super excited about him pushing envelopes, whether people like it or not. Um, and I'm super just, I'm super just excited where we're at in history. Yeah. Because I think that we're, at a, we're at a place that's very interesting. Um, and I do think yeah. that it's, we are ripe and ready for messengers to be released specifically yeah. in music. And I mean, yeah. I remember, I think it was, I think it was either Socrates or Plato. It doesn't matter. Basically the same guy because they taught one of them taught the other one. And, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he said, you know what? Don't give me the laws. He said, don't give me the laws of the people to control the people. He said, give me their music. And yeah, the that's right, man. You know, and I was actually, I was talking with a, a new friend I just met in, um, in San Di from San Diego just the other day. And, um, and I, and I was prophesying over him influence over Kings. Yeah. And, um, and in that, in, in, in the, um, the broad shoulders that I was seeing him have, uh -huh. um, to carry more. Um, I was actually saying the, the Kings and Queens of our generation are not the politics, uh, not no. the politicians. They're actually the social media influencers. Yep. The artists that people yep. are singing their songs, because if you can, I mean, what's the quickest way to indoctrinate a culture? Yep. It's to get them singing. Uh, you know, I mean, we've seen it. Oh my gosh, just yeah. movements can happen, you know? Yep. And, and I, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. I Me really too. Am. I'm, yeah. I am a hundred percent with you. I'm there and I am, uh, I'm excited. So that's yeah. awesome. I mean, do you have anything other else you want to say about in your notes that you were like wanting to talk about? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, oh no, well, not for corporate worship songs. Well, but then I let's think, save um, it. Let's save it sure. for the audio, just the audio part. So, Brian, okay. um, I want to. We're going to stop the audio. We're going to start the video. Stop the video portion in just a second. But I want people to know. So, Brian McCleary, how can they follow yeah. you on social media? Okay. Uh, yeah, Brian uh, B R Y A N McCleary yep. M C C L E E R Y. I have a weird name, so I have to spell it. Uh, Brian McCleary at on uh, like at Brian McCleary Instagram. Yep. I think Brian McCleary Music on Facebook. Um, and uh, you can search any one of the uh, you, there's YouTube videos yep. and all you know um, Spotify and all that stuff. You can just search my name and, and find the music there. Yeah. So he wears yeah, a crown. And my wife's that's album. Cool yeah. Grief. Yep. Grief. Ashley. Yep. yep. Ashley has Ashley McCleary. Yep. And yep. then you have uh, Here Wears a Crown. So that's awesome. Here Wears so a Crown, yeah. Everybody, if you want to hear the next topic we're going to talk about, uh, you have to go over to the audio portion where you can find it on all, pretty much all of the uh, podcasting outlets. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Stitcher, it's on you name it, it's there. Um, so, yeah. So we're going to be stopping right now. If you've enjoyed the podcast, think about giving it a review or five stars, a like or a share. For more information, visit modernpsalmist.com.